I'm a 35-year-old female, and my sister-in-law is 46. I have three children. For my birthday last week, my son, teen, went out and bought me this swinging hammock chair that I had wanted for two years, and it cost him quite a bit of his saved money, which I fully intend to put back into his bank account so he could continue saving. He was so excited to see me open this gift and couldn't wait to help me set it up. I told him he shouldn't have, that it was a lot of money, and his response was, you never get anything nice. I wanted you to have it. And it was true. I don't usually get anything for my birthday or Christmas outside of Tupperware or soaps. So it might sound stupid, but I've cherished this swing ever since he got it for me, especially when I finally have something nice that's mine. My sister-in-law comes over once a week to see all of us, and she immediately headed straight for my swing, which my son hooked up on our deck. I told her not to sit on it, and she said, is there a weight limit? So I told her, yes, 250 pounds, and I showed her the box to confirm. She was not upset about this. She just said, that's a bummer. They need to make something capable of holding us big girls. I agreed with her and went about my business. At this point, my husband shows up from work. When I went inside to grab us some drinks, she and my husband were talking on the porch, and not even five minutes later, I heard a loud crash and my husband said, my God, are you all right? So I went out and sure enough, she had sat in my swing and the crochet netting around the hook snapped one side, causing her to fall right on her butt. She's sitting there laughing, gets up and says, I guess I need to learn to listen. So I lost it. As I said above, I never get anything nice, never. This is the one thing that I had that was mine and it didn't even take someone a freaking week before they ruined it for me. So I just said, I told you not even 20 minutes ago that it would not hold you and to please not sit in it. She makes some comment. Usually the weight limit is a lie. I thought it would hold. So I said, the weight limit probably would have held if you were only like 50 pounds heavier than it, not 150. She is 420-ish pounds because she's one of those girls who eats food on camera for the money and she absolutely loves her weight. But regardless, instead of apologizing or offering to compensate me for my destroyed item, she's resorted to saying I'm an idiot for making her feel like her weight is a problem and my husband's on her side. It's just a stupid swing. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Tell your husband he can buy you a new one because it's just a stupid swing and he and sister-in-law can apologize to you and your son only then will everything be okay. You don't get to break the gift and laugh about it. If OP never gets anything nice for birthdays or holidays, I'm guessing hubby is part of the problem. OP, your sister-in-law needs to compensate you for it, as well as apologize. She's heavy. She knows it. She deliberately sat in your swing, even though she knew the weight limit was lower than her weight. She's pretty much broken it intentionally. Also, any decent person gets embarrassed when they break something that doesn't belong to them, no matter how it happens, especially if the owner gets upset about it. Instead, she's playing the you fat shamed me card to get out of the situation. Dude, she's past heavy. She's super morbidly obese. She knew that it wasn't going to hold her and did it anyway. I'm surprised someone who eats food on camera for a living would even play the fat shaming card like you intentionally make yourself fat. It's not like you try to diet and exercise and the weight isn't coming off. OP, I wouldn't let her come over until she gets you a new swing. How does your son feel about all of this? Poor child. Not the idiot for this situation, but what kind of marriage do you have where you comment multiple times you have nothing that's yours and you never get gifts aside from soap and Tupperware? That honestly sounds terrible. Your son had to get you a nice gift because he knew his dad wasn't going to step up. Sad. The moment I saw that, I wasn't surprised at all when your husband took sister-in-law's side. It sounds like a horrible, uncaring partner to have. I, female 24, have been seeing my boyfriend, Martin, 30, for eight months. He's super funny and sweet. He's currently out of a job for health reasons, but he's actively looking for a new job. This is our first major fight and I'm unsure whether I was at fault here. Two days ago, we spent the night together. 
and he went to the store early in the morning to buy some groceries. Unbeknownst to me, he took my credit card to shop with it. I got woken up by him calling asking me to give him my credit card pin. I was confused. I asked why, and he said he went grocery shopping with my card and forgot to ask me for the pen before he left. I got mad and felt quite violated. I told him I was sorry, but I did not give him permission for him to go out and shop using my card. He sounded confused and said he was just trying to buy us breakfast and it only cost about $20. Again, I said I was sorry, but refused to give him the pen number. He obviously sounded upset and asked why. I told him that he didn't consider getting my permission to take my card and use it. He said, all right then, guess no breakfast for us, then hung up. I called and called, but no response. He returned and handed me the card back, then complained about how he was just trying to buy us breakfast and that he didn't intend to make a huge purchase. I said, I understood, but it's all about consent to me. He seemed pretty irritated and upset, though he said it was fine. He left after this and hasn't returned my calls. He then texted that he wasn't intending on stealing from me and that he thought that I wouldn't make such a fuss about it and that he did get my permission when he called to ask for the pen. But I feel like it's just me feeling like he violated my boundaries. He's been upset since then, saying I ruined our time together by making a huge deal out of it and embarrassing him at the store by making him return the stuff he bought at the register. Gosh, I feel like such an idiot here, but I think that he could have asked me first. Am I the idiot or not? Not the idiot. He is emotionally manipulating you. This is all on him. He took your card without your consent. That's the issue here. You're not obliged to share your pin with anybody. If it's only $20, why didn't he pay for it? This man took advantage of you being asleep, stole from you, then decided to buy you breakfast by using your own money? I love the fact that he kept saying, I wanted to buy us breakfast. No, she was buying the breakfast. He was using her money. Professional scammers will often test the waters by making small innocuous purchases to see if they send up red flags before going for the big haul with the credit card company. OP, this is a major red flag. He wasn't doing anything for you. He was attempting to get something from you, access to your funds, via manipulation. You cannot trust this man. Honestly, I cut and run. If you had given him that pin, he would take your card for bigger purchases behind your back. He's just upset he's been caught. Not the idiot. That is theft, and you should call your bank and get a new card because he still had access to your credit card number and the CVV digits on the card to proceed with online purchases. He is not trustworthy, and I'd break up with him instead of chasing him because he's upset. He showed you a bright red flag eight months in. Take notice and run. I'm seven months pregnant. I agreed to live with the baby's father for the duration of my pregnancy and the first year of our son's life. Things were great initially because he was very considerate and helpful. However, the longer my pregnancy continued, the more I felt like he was taking over. He kept pushing me to eat only healthy food and had his cook prepare all my meals, even though I told him I could do it myself. He pushed me to stick to an exercise routine and hired a yoga teacher to come twice a week. He didn't want me to get to crowded places in case I got sick, and he generally treated me like I was so fragile that even carrying three books was too much work for me. He even tried to push me to stick to a specific bedtime. I sucked it up for as long as I did, because whenever I confided in family or friends, they would all gush about how thoughtful and kind he was. Last week, I finally reached my breaking point when the cook wouldn't let me eat what I wanted and kept telling me he said I needed to eat the food she prepared. I understand she was just trying to do her job, but I was so fed up that I decided to leave and eat fast food instead. Otherwise, I would have yelled at her. It was great, and I decided not to return to his house and I'm staying at a hotel while looking for a place. He's been freaking out since I left and at first tried to convince me to come home and then demanded I tell him where I was. I've told him repeatedly, I'll let him know once the baby's born, but until then, I want to be left alone. My family and our mutual friends have all been asking me where I am too. I know they're only asking for his sake, 
so I haven't told any of them either. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I assume that your family is charmed by your baby's father's money. Don't tell them where you are. Your ex seems to be very controlling. He's viewing you like an incubator chamber, not a person. Make sure the GPS on your phone is always turned off. Get a lawyer ASAP. You are a person, not his property. You have every right to your own autonomy. You owe no one an explanation for that. I highly suggest you get a lawyer lined up now so that when you have the baby, he can't take it away from you. I'd bet money he's already checking out his legal options to declare you an unfit mother. Not the idiot, but a hotel will get very lonely quickly. While you're looking for a place, I also suggest going to prenatal classes and parenting classes, anywhere you might be able to expand your circle and get more support. Sounds like you don't or can't trust the people who are supposed to be your emotional support. So don't neglect that when making a move. Once you have the baby, you might feel even more alone and you don't want him using that against you. So do what you can to find your tribe. This is a great idea. However, you may also want to rescind any permission given to the doctor to allow them to share your health details. Ex nor family should have access to your medical records, especially concerning your baby. I have two daughters, Nadine, 25, and Haley, 27. Their father and I raised them as Muslim in the U.S. Their father and I have a happy marriage, though it was arranged. It was implied as they grew up that they would have arranged marriages, though we never said outright they would be forced to marry anyone they didn't want. And if they found a man on their own, we would have given our blessing, provided he was a good person. Haley got married last year through an arranged marriage, and by all appearances, they seemed to enjoy their lives together. Nadine, however, was always a little more rebellious, though by no means a problem child. We keep in contact, but I'm not always entirely sure where she's been since finishing college. A few weeks ago, I called her, asking her to come to visit. We said we wanted to discuss finding her a husband if she was interested. She told us, actually, I have a partner. I was surprised, but wanted to be supportive and asked to meet him. That's when she dropped the news. Her partner is a woman. This is generally frowned upon in the Muslim community. I teared up on the phone, but tried my best to stay composed, hide my tears, and remain as casual and happy for her. I asked for her name, what she was like, how they met, how long they had been together, what she did, etc. I also asked if she was Muslim, and she was not. I then hesitantly asked if she was sure she wanted to be with a woman, bringing up our Muslim faith and what our community and family might think. And I asked her why she never told me that this was what she wanted. She responded she knew that I would react this way. So she snapped at me, saying yes, she was certain, and then dropped the second bomb. They had already moved to another state across the country and were married, even before Haley. At this, I couldn't hide my tears. I broke down and told her I was so hurt that she had hidden so much of her life from me to the point where I couldn't even join her at her wedding. Nadine told me she knew I would react this way and didn't want me or her father to get in the way of her and her wife's happiness. We hung up and I've been overwhelmed and sad ever since. I tried calling a few times, but Nadine never picked up. Then finally, Haley told me Nadine wanted space for a while. I'm juggling so many feelings, but I never want to lose my daughter. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot, and I am trying to say this gently because I don't think your intention was ever to harm, but you didn't raise your child in an environment where she felt she could be open with you. You disapprove of her choice, and while you say you want her to be happy, that's clearly not the message she received from you while growing up. She took steps to protect herself, even if that meant distancing herself from you. That's on you and your husband. I mean, she was going to arrange a marriage for her, as she did for her sister if she wanted one. She wasn't forcing her to get an arranged marriage if she wasn't interested in one, which, contrary to popular belief, many people do want. OP didn't foster her in an environment that was supportive of her being her authentic self. Still, her offering to help her arrange her marriage doesn't automatically make her the idiot. 
I feel like there's a lot more to the story. NLP is downplaying her reaction to the news. There is a reason her daughter kept the information from her for so long. She didn't even know she had moved across the country. No child just goes low contact with their family for no reason. OP, you are so disconnected from your daughter that you had no idea she was gay, no idea she moved states, no idea she has a girlfriend, and no idea that you're part of the problem with perpetuating Muslims being against gay people. The real issue is your daughter being gay and you being unable to handle that. My husband and I have two kids, Ryder 21 male and Juliet, female teen. Both of them are close to both sets of grandparents and visit them regularly. Juliet is discovering her style and she's experimenting with clothes, hairstyles, and makeup. Ryder gave her a sewing machine last month and she kind of went nuts with this, doing a lot of pieces for fun. Since Julie is still a kid, we set a few rules because we believe that even when she's expressing herself, there are still things she shouldn't wear, like no see-through things, no large cleavage, and no minis. She's always mixing patterns, colors, prints, and textures, pants under skirts, dresses as cardigans, big earrings and necklaces, etc. Sometimes it does feel too much, but that's just fashion, isn't it? She seems happy, and we don't think it's fair to call her outfits ugly when she has fun and is experimenting. She still tones it down when it comes to family gatherings because she's afraid people will say something. It is important to add that Ryder 100% supports and encourages his sister. Most of the funny jewelry that Julie owns are things Ryder bought for her. And as I said, he recently gave her a sewing machine. She also makes his shirts and is trying to make him a jacket. Yesterday was Ryder's 21st birthday and we decided to have a small party just with family. Julie asked Ryder what his theme was so she could dress accordingly, but he said she could dress however she wanted. And I swear you could see Julie's eyes sparkling and she ended up wearing a weird combination but looked happy and Ryder said she looked pretty. As soon as everyone starts to come, they eye Julie but nobody says anything. I noticed my father-in-law making a face and wanted to talk to Ryder. He says, it's time to address the elephant in the room. Juliet looks awful. Go change to normal clothes, little girl. Ryder rolls his eyes and says that a 70-year-old man bullying a teen is pathetic. They start to fight and my father-in-law demands I punish my son, but my husband and I refuse. He made Julie cry. I may be the idiot because my son disrespected his grandma and one person being an idiot doesn't justify another. Not the idiot. Shame on your father-in-law. It sounds like you're doing everything right to me, and your kids sound lovely. Keep doing what you're doing. Also, your son is 21. I don't think grounding him for an argument between him and another adult would be appropriate anyway. Your father-in-law is angry that he got called out for his poor behavior. How do you even punish a 21-year-old? Lock up the liquor cabinet? If it was some fun, lighthearted ribbing about the clothes, maybe he went too far calling him pathetic. But if he was being mean, there's nothing wrong with being mean back. If you're big enough to talk crap, you must be ready to take it. Ground the father-in-law. No family gatherings for one year. No birthdays, Father's Day, Thanksgiving, or Christmas. Maybe he'll learn how to behave. He's the one that thinks grounding an adult is a good idea. Yes, good for him. But why the heck was OP allowing someone to bully her daughter? She should have stood up for her and thrown father-in-law out immediately unless he apologized to her daughter.